Okay. I'm, I'm not sure if we should be starting or waiting some more minutes, but I would, I would start by thanking you for being here after lunch. Uh, we have this huge challenge of discussing this important and interesting, interesting topic of open cities um, right uh, after lunch. So it's, it's, I, I'm sure we will try to make it as interactive as possible and as, as, as appealing as possible as well. We have a very rich set of speakers in this panel. And we, we will have here, on my left, we have Edward Hill, who comes from the city of Gava, and he's the city manager of the city. Then we have Dr. Sokwo. Is that, is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have Dr. Sokwo as well, Associated Director of Cyber Physical Systems, who led the Smart America Challenge in, in the United States. Then we have Sergio Garcia from Telefonica, who has been leading the Smart City Solutions uh, branch of, of Fiwer in, in, in the whole Europe. And then we have Rudy Bormann, who's the General Director for Innovation and Open Government uh, in the city of Buenos Aires. Um, the way we are organizing this panel is that we will start by four presentations by each one of the speakers. Then I'll launch some topics for discussion. And I'm glad that after that, if you could please raise your hand and put the questions that you find most useful, um, please be welcome to do that. So we will start by Sergio Garcia, who's going to present us the Fiverr case. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Sergio. I'm working in Fireware project uh, in charge of the uh, data chapter architecture and also in the connection of uh, smart cities to, to the Fireware lab. And my objective here is to give you a short overview of what's Fireware about and what it can do for, for your city. Okay, so, but first of all, let me give you a bit of uh, background about uh, why fireware okay so uh, well we all know that uh, internet is transforming our lives our uh, our economies well we have lots of examples of, of tools that are changing the, the way we understand life uh, and several years ago the European Commission together with the major players in the ICT field in, in Europe well, realized that uh, well Europe didn't have a strong position in any kind of platform, so most of the plat technological platforms in the world are led by other regions in the world. And uh, well, they decided to do something uh, to solve that problem. That something is uh, Fiverr. Fiverr is uh, an initiative where we think that internet is like the NAS computer. It's like the place where many, many sit, many applications will be hosted, where the data will be hosted, and where in the future there will be very interesting set of, addi of, of added value tools and possibilities uh, to create future internet applications like Internet of Things, augmented reality, big data, and many others. So, um, as objectives, uh, first of all, uh, we identified in Fiverr the need to avoid vendor locking through the uh, creation of a platform with open standards. So as you will see, all the specifications in Fiverr are open and royalty free, and this allows to foster the innovation ecosystems around. There are a number of uh, uh, standard APIs that are used to generate deep data and to consume data by applications. On the other hand, uh, we try to create a platform where it could be possible to easily port an application from one uh, environment to another environment. In the area of smart cities, to be able to move an application one, from one city to another, to another city. And above that, uh, the possibility to use the part of the platform that you really 
think it's interesting for you. So it's modular. You don't have to take everything or nothing. It's just that you, you can pick and select the part of the platform you are interested in. Beyond that, uh, it allows you to create any kind of business model on top. So we have the platform, but the, we, ha we also have entrepreneurs doing things with the platform with their own business model. So in a nutshell, uh, in Fiverr, we have two big pieces. We have an open standard platform, like kind of what uh, Apache was for the open source community. An open platform where we can create technology, improve technology and, and adopt uh, technology. And at the same time, while technology is not enough, we needed to uh, create an, an ecosystem of innovation and basically to, uh, let's say, to foster the creation of this uh, innovation ecosystem with uh, entrepreneurs and so on. So, uh, from the point of view of the technology, Fiware is a cloud-based uh, platform based on, or it's built on top of open stack standards, if you are aware or you know about that, with some additional capabilities about platform as a service and deployment of technologies, plus a set of libraries we call them generic enablers that allow you to create easily new applications without worrying about many typical things that, that you find. So, for instance, uh, well, there are solutions for managing big data, for managing Internet of Things, for creating advanced interfaces with virtual reality or augmented reality, and many, many other possibilities. The interesting thing here is that all these technologies are open from the point of view of their specification, open and royalty free, and there are uh, reference open source implementations for each of the different uh, specifications. So, it's completely open for you to use. Uh, well, you can see here a list of the different technological chapters that uh, there are in, in Fiware. Well, just to give you a, an idea of the kind of things you will find in Fiware, okay? But from the cloud and the data management to advanced interfaces for security, there are a wide uh, range of solutions that are provided in Fiware. So from the point of view of the ecosystem of innovation, here we thought that we need to bring together not only the technology providers, so those uh, organizations that are creating the technology that builds uh, Fiware, but also to bring application sponsor, uh, sponsors and data providers, for instance, in our domain uh, uh, cities and small cities, and at the same time to, to bring and to meet with entrepreneurs and developers willing to uh, create applications and find solutions uh, for different problems. So from that point of view, uh, the Fiverr ecosystem is the place where, uh, well, entrepreneurs can find data and can find problems. Technology providers can provide technology and can, uh, well, experiment with their technology or allow others to experiment with the technology. And from the point of view of the cities, well, they can communicate their problems. They can put their data at work. And most importantly, they can find a large community of developers and entrepreneurs that are already solving things that could be adopted for their cities. So you can see in this map um, the s different nodes that have been already deployed in, in Europe for the Fiber Lab. Fiber Lab is are the, uh, the Fiber Lab is the experimentation facility in Europe where you can register and get some. Uh, cloud resources for free to, to start playing with the technology, to make your prototypes, experimenting, and so on. So there are 12 nodes in Europe, uh, already one node in, in deployed in, in Mexico, another node that is being uh, currently deployed in Brazil, and some other cases. Uh, so basically, I would say this is not anymore a European uh, solution, this is a, a worldwide solution. So when a city wants to create an application, uh, or, or better than that, when, when it wants to connect to the Fiverr Lab to promote developers to create new applications, well, there are four different aspects to, have in, to, to, to take into account. First of all, IoT. There are many cities already deploying sensors in their cities, and, and this is an important technological aspect of the platform, to be able to integrate sensors and to provide a standard and uh, uniform API to access the data from, from sensors. 
There's another important aspect that has to do with open data from the cities. And again, there are tools to, uh, to publish and consume open data in a standard way. Another relevant information is about the city context. So what about the real-time services that are managing the city and, and can provide useful uh, information not only for, for the management of the city itself, but also for developers that want to create new, new applications. And finally, the different uh, set of tools or technologies that can be found in Fiverr and that we call, if you look at the uh, web page, uh, generic enablers. So with all these um, elements, the cities can become uh, an innovation platform, a platform that we could let's say, draw, drive the economic growth in the city, create new employments and solutions to improve the, the life of the citizens are all, and also to, to improve uh, the ec local economies. So in this list, you will find the list of the different, uh, well, the different cities that are already uh, working with uh, Fiber. Uh, there are many different uh, kinds of integration in all these cities, so we have uh, in some cases, Internet of Things, sensors, in other cases, many cases, open data. In some others, uh, integration of uh, context information. And in most of them, there are currently being implemented or maybe in some cases have been already implemented some prototypes or use cases that are, uh, well, willing to or have been used to demonstrate that it is possible to create interesting technologies or interesting solutions on top of the platform. So you can see some of the examples on what uh, have been done, what, what has been done in the different cities. In particular, well, I, uh, you should take into account that all these activities have been implemented by local, typically, well, local organizations, in many cases, entrepreneurs, local entrepreneurs that are working with Fiverr in the, in the definition of the solutions. And in many cases also um, in tight collaboration with the municipalities to find the problems that the local entrepreneurs could solve with Fiverr technologies. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, we have four important elements in Fiverr. We have Fiverr as the platform, the technological platform that we have built and now we are putting in, uh, at work. The Fiverr Lab, like the experimentation facility where developers and cities can publish data, consume data, and create an experiment with the technology. The acceleration program uh, where, with which the European Commission is helping some uh, entrepreneurs in Europe to use the technology and create uh, solutions. And the Fiverr Ops as an important element that helps cities and other local players to create new Fiverr nodes, new Fiverr instances, and easily connect them to the rest of the Fiverr Lab infrastructure. So um, before closing, was, let me tell you that, uh, well, it's not very clear, but anyway, uh, we have a stand here in the, in the expo, so we will be there the three days with different workshops and activities and lots of, of demos that you can, uh, well, check and if you find them interesting for, for your particular cities. So, um, that's it from my side. Uh, there is an email list here that you can use for uh, getting in touch with us if you want more information about what Fiverr can do for your city. Okay, so that's it from my side. Thank you very much, Sergio. <laughs> it, is, it is important to say that this Fiverr comes in the context of the future internet public partner partnership public-private partnership of the European Commission, which is a 500 million euros program to fund uh, this new future internet. And that is now being triggered in many cities in order for developers and startups to create applications to use this platform. So it, this is, we were seeing this, this morning, the example from New York, when they decided to invest in uh, universities because it would create jobs. This is a similar investment, the same kind of approach from the European Commission decided, deciding to invest in ICT to create jobs and to create startups. So, but now we are going to a different approach from Dr. Sokwo, who's presenting us Smart America Challenge. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. 
let me bring up slides. First, thanks for staying with me until this late in the afternoon, especially for those uh, who are suffering from jet lag right now. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to talk about Global City Teams Challenge today. And I work as an associate director of cyber physical systems um, at a US government agency called the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And until a few months ago, I worked as a White House Presidential Innovation Fellow, which is a program to bring in private sector innovators into the government. That's a White House led program. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I did during that process of White House Innovation Fellow and how we started the Global City Teams Challenge. Um, okay, got it. All right, so the, let me talk a little bit about what cyber physical systems is, okay? So CPS, that's what it is, cyber physical systems, essentially a combination of cyber systems, which is software and networking system, and physical systems that actually touches the physical world, like sensors and actuators. So for example, car is a physical system. But if you have 3,000 cars networked together, okay, that it suddenly becomes a network things, which means that becomes cyber physical system, okay? So a lot of the cyber physical systems has an aspect of real timeness, which means things have to happen in a certain time because it involves control of the system, okay? So examples like Internet of Things, that's kind of an example that we always hear about. So Internet is cyber uh, system. Things is really physical system. And UAVs, group of robots, um, autonomous vehicles, which means self-driving cars, traffic management system, smart grid, and remote healthcare system, advanced manufacturing. Virtually anything you can think of as a smart systems are cyber physical systems. So, what happened was we wanted to show that these things are not sci uh, the sci-fi movies anymore. We wanted to show all this great stuff that are real. So the, as part of the Presidential Innovation Fellow Program, we created the Smart America Challenge, which basically said, hey, bring in your exciting stuff and let's demonstrate that these things are possible. And let's not just talk about it. I mean, we, we heard about talks for 20 years about the you know, what's gonna happen in 2050 uh, and everything is gonna be automated and everything. Let's really show that. So amazingly, more than 100 organizations got together, created 24 teams, and I'm gonna show you just a few examples of what happened. Remote healthcare, elderly care system, transactive energy and smart emergency response system, autonomous vehicles, vehicle to pedestrian CPS uh, communication, water conservation, I gotta say one, one thing about water conservation. Do you know about 30% of water is lost during transmission, at least in the United States? California has been suffering from drought whole year, and 30% of the water is just, just leaks out of the pipes underground. Okay, it's, I mean, this is ridiculous. So we should do something about it. So putting sensors around putting monitor, monitors and you can at least detect where it's leaking, you can fix them. So that's kind of what cyber physical systems can do. So after all these incubations, so we thought, what is our next step? So next step is deployment. So all these great stuff we came up with, let's deploy them. And what is the issue of the deployment today is, is like deployment is extremely fragmented and extremely isolated and one-off projects. We thought this deployment, smart city is a great venue to deploy transportation system, energy system, manufacturing, virtually anything you can think of in cyber physical systems are part of a smart city. Problem is every city has their own way of doing it. One city say, one, one day mayor thinks, I wanna make my city smart, okay? Then what do they do? They first cut, off a, cut out a budget and then they call vendors <laughs> and the vendors send in their people and they say, you gotta fix this, you gotta fix that. Oh, by the way, I can customize all my solutions to put, make it work. Great, your city may became great smart. The next city, then one day, heard about this story, the mayor thinks, okay, I gotta make my smart too. What, what happens? Same thing happens over and over again. Again, 
This guy calls the, uh, but, uh, the, the vendors, and vendors comes with all kinds of customized solutions. Everything's one of product. So this is a vicious cycle. We want to fix it. So how do we fix it? We need to come up with a more replicable and scalable model, not just one-off projects, but some way that the solutions can be shared and reused and replicated in multiple cities. How do we do it? Essentially, trying to work with one single cities. We want to bring in multiple cities, not just from one continent or one, one place. We want to bring in cities from all over the world, Europeans, uh, Asians, and US, and even Africa, Australia cities, to work together, come with a joint requirements. And on the other side, we bring in innovators, innovators of corporations, and universities, and nonprofits, even government agencies you can think of, and let them work on those joint requirements, come up with a solution that can be replicated, that can be deployed in multiple cities. Using this, by, if you do it, both parties suddenly enjoy economy of scale because cities do not have to reinvest and reinventing the wheel every time they do their parking meters, for example. And innovators can sell one solution to multiple times, to multiple cities. So that's the approach. So what are you going to do at, at the end of the day? What is going to come out of this uh, challenging process? Obviously, we're going to demonstrate the replicable, scalable solution and interoperable projects. And then uh, we are planning to come with what we call smart cities framework. Uh, I'm from NIST. NIST, is work, NIST works on standardization. That's what NIST does uh, as a US government agency. The outcome of this challenge will be fed into this framework document. So I'm not going to write a framework based on theories. I'm going to write a framework based on actual deployments, which is successful. Okay? I think this kind of bottom approach is a lot more effective than having uh, 20 different experts sit in the room and come with a white paper. At least that's my approach. So currently, who are partnering here? US Ignite, which is a nonprofit in the US. They're essentially application developers on top of high-speed internet. National Science Foundation, International Trade Administration, US DOT, Health Human Services, DOE, and pretty much all the big companies you can think of, like IBM, Intel, Qualcomm, Cisco, Arm Holdings, and many other corporations and academic part institutions are participating right now. So current status, we had a kickoff meeting at NIST uh, September 29th and 30th. We had about 350 people joined remotely and on site. Uh, there were a lot of European participants remotely joined. There were also Asian participants. Remotely joined, by the way, is amazing. They, it means they, wa they, were, they were awake 3 o'clock in the morning over there. So it was amazing. Anyway, um, it came, we came with the 16 teams on that day. And we added more than 10 teams since then for the last few weeks. Now we have about 28 teams working together. So examples, action clusters, action clusters teams. I'm not going to go through the projects, but it evolves from healthcare, uh, energy sector, uh, you know, transportation, anything you can think of. These are the cities they're participating currently, but I would like more European and Asian cities to participate too, because this is an opportunity for us to break the silo, not just work in one city, one solution, but we can all work together and replicate the success. So next steps, uh, we, are, we have Q&As and webinars, of course. We're going to have what we call Tech Jam in February, which means we're going to bring in all these teams and let them present where they are, let them present the status. And then eventually in June, this is where everything comes together. We're going to have a culminating event, what we call festivals. This is where we bring in all the teams and we bring media, we bring in government agencies, we bring in everybody, all stakeholders say, this is the example of solutions that you have to go out and replicate. So that's the festival that we're going to do. This is where everything pays off. Um, for more information, uh, here is the content information, all the websites we can think of. Um, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you very much. So now we go for Edward, who will have, hopefully, yeah. First of all, I would like to, have to thank you very much to invite you us to come here to talk about our local innovation. I'm going to try to highlight the main points of our local innovation. Uh, you have mm, as much as in, uh, information about our portal in this web page. 
uh, if you want to get in our innovation deeper. Uh, I only try to explain who we are, who we are and, 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 and why uh, we have developed this uh, open portal, uh, open portal, the open data portal. First of all, we are a village, quite small, uh, near Barcelona, Gaba. Uh, we, are, we have almost uh, 50,000 inhabitants. And we are small, but we have more or less the same problems than most of the develop, development countries, which is uh, a deep uh, trust crisis in, in, in our political system. We have to overcome this crisis, this trust crisis, uh, through uh, strong tools such as uh, transparency and uh, citizens' engagement. And for us, the best uh, way to do that is uh, through open data portals. Uh, but here in Spain, we have uh, many um, tries to develop these tools. Uh, but from our point of view, we have choose the, the wrong way to develop the, the, the tool to get the aim. Uh, we have two kind of portals, transparency portals and open data portals. Uh, from our point of view, we, we don't understand these, these differences and why. Why we have two kind of portals? Uh, sometimes the open data portals is focused on developers. It's not uh, the normal information that uh, citizens want to know. Uh, and the transparency portal, let me say that is some kind of cook information. You don't have the information in, o in open data format. You get only numbers and figures made by, the gov made by, by government. We thought that this was not a real way to, to solve the problem of transparency and to engage people in government issues. And we developed this portal. And when you can, uh, from the point of view that you data analysis, if you want to say, it's not an, an open data portal, also, uh, it's also a data analysis portal, when you can develop a visualization through the data. And the citizens could uh, cook uh, the data for themselves. This is the main issue on our portal. We have developed a strategic open data, op open data portal um, plan. And the first data sets that, that, that we want to share with our inhabitants were focused on financial issues. The reason why uh, we have started with uh, financial issues is quite obvious. We have a trust crisis and we have to show that we are spending the money in the right way. If you take a look at our portal, let's see. I'm going to try to, to send you, uh, to, to raise you a, a challenge. If you are able to find another open data portal in Spain or even in Southern European country where you can get all the invoices related to the budget, just let me say, uh, just let me know. Because we, in, in our portal, you are able to find all the invoices that you want linked to the budget. Yeah, it's here. Uh, you can see the open data portal. Uh, there are many, many innovations here. For instance, social stream, and you can go here, and it's like a forum where the citizens share opinions about the data and about the government issues. We don't have many, many questions about, you know, in Spain, uh, we are quite watchers and not and not active, active people. Uh, uh, it's a pretty, but uh, in Spain we have a culture not related to, to share, uh, share um, responsibilities with uh, politicians. 
we always tend to complain but not to to be involved in the action we wanted to change that and we want to develop with the portal some kind of actions willing to try to learn and try to um, to train our our community to to work with this portal as well well this is uh, like the forum and if you go here Finances, finance. Uh, for instance, this is quite. This is most trendy graph in our city. Is linked to salaries. A lot of people, you know, gossip how, how which is the salary of the city manager. You get get it, information just here. And this is a. This is uh, a graph, but if uh, there you can see that the information is in open data format as well. And if you will, if you would like to set up your own graph, you could work with with the portal as well. And another, you can see that we have data sets, data sets which are the information in open data format and graphs but if you are a i don't know a citizen that they don't want to to they don't trust in our own graphs and they want to set up their own their own graph uh, we could go here and i don't know for instance and here is the the invoices of the current year and i want to i don't know visualize the data and columns and, and develop some kind of graphs. For instance, let me see. Here I go to the where the where the money goes and here you can find how much money and this is the the graph can you you can build the graph by your own you don't need to trust in the information that government gives you gives to you and this is a way to try to invest you know, of, of one of the most important issues that we have in the development countries that is trying to improve our citizen engagement and transparency is a good way to do it. Thank you very much. So after Edward, we now go to Buenos Aires with Rudy's presentation of his open data and open government initiative in, in Buenos Aires. Thank you very much. I will try to do this as fast as I can because I'm about to miss my plane. So <laughs> back home. <laughs> so uh, Buenos Aires, 3 million people, habitants with 8 million commuting every day. Very complex city. And I will try to, to give you some examples of how are we uh, taking the, 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 the open concept as a principle for the city. Um, Open source software, this is uh, Buenos Aires data. It's the open data catalog for the city. This is the second version. Uh, we have been working a lot on creating not only applications, but uh, fostering a community around the, 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 the catalog. This is our GitHub page. We are one of the first cities in, in Latin America in having actually a, a GitHub where we are sharing our code of our, our applications. Um, this is buenosaires.gov.er, that's the, the city the city official website. Um, the city used to have like 400 sites and we uh, organize all those sites in only three sites. Um, and we are using Drupal for, for, for the Buenos Aires, which is, uh, which is open, which is free, and it's easy to use, and it's great if you have a lot of content to manage. 
open policy. We create a policy to, to, to help the, the open data uh, initiative. Um, the mayor announced a few weeks ago that actually Buenos Aires is an open, uh, a city open by default. And what actually means is that all the digital information that is managed, produced, and uh, developed by the city, it's open by default. Uh, and it should be in open format. So it's kind of um, a big deal. <laughs> uh, open design, we also open all our, our uh, UX uh, design manuals. So it's easy to see and to copy how are we managing information. And you can, we can share that with, with the public, so open design. Here are some of our, our good friends of GitHub, Seekan and Drupal. Seekan is the platform that we are using for open data, opening data. It shouldn't be expensive. It shouldn't take a lot of money from, from the government. If you're spending too much money in, in a data portal, that's a mistake. Seekan is free. And you only need a small team of developers to run it. Also with Drupal and uh, well, GitHub also sharing our code. All the applications that are being developed by the city uh, are open. And you can see the codes of, of all of it. Open license two years ago, our mayor signed, um, signed an executive order. And all the, digital, all the digital content of the city, it's, uh, it's Creative Commons. Uh, and this is when, uh, Lawrence, uh, when Lessig visited Buenos Aires and our mayor uh, named him uh, Honorable Citizen or something like that. It was a huge step for the city. Open spaces. We are using also open spaces as a place to, to, to collaborate with the, with the citizens on, on co-creating public policy, uh, not only as an event, but it's a way to rethink the way we create uh, public policy. This specifically, it's a photo of the uh, education hackathon. Um, and close to the hackathon, there was this open space where we were trying to develop uh, ideas around transforming public libraries into uh, maker spaces. And today, uh, all Saturday morning, five public libraries in the city of Buenos Aires are uh, having this, uh, the, this um, code clubs where we are teaching coding to, to, to any citizen that is interested in learning code. Uh, and that is happening in a place that it's, has been uh, forgotten, like the public libraries. Uh, open challenges, uh, challenges, we are using challenges as a way to open innovation. All different kind of challenges, more complex, more simple trying to find ideas from the, from the citizens. And we keep this. This is the, uh, a photo of our Open Challenge uh, website, where we keep three or four Open Challenges all the time, trying to find ideas that come to the city, making that like a, a process, uh, more than a one specific, uh, one specific contest. Open innovation, we have been talking a lot here around um, hackathons and, and see how try to, to bring civic innovation into the government. We understand that hackathons need a lot of work. It's not just bring the tables, call the developers, and that's it. Uh, but it's because hackathons are, come on, it's not about the damn apps. It's about something else. It's about building a new way to, to start creating these dialogues between uh, universities, uh, the government, uh, civil society, um, private sector, et cetera, et cetera. And this is a photo of, of one of our last hackathons where this team was trying to uh, develop a way to um, to put some of the roads at the of the slums of the city slums in a in an open map, which actually was a really really cool project. But we spent a lot of time working on the hackathons, working on the projects, trying to to draft the problem and bring the problem uh, very clearly to the table. So in in it's it's not just just throw the data and and see how these magical kids developers are going to do. It's it's much more complex and it needs a lot of work uh, to get it to get it right. Um, and to understand that the ROI of, the, of, of this kind of, 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 of um, developments is not easy and it's not fast. It needs time uh, and it's a, a completely new way to, to, to develop um, public policy. Open collaboration in the city, we create this, um, what we call the Innovation Roundtable, which is actually uh, a, a group with people from every different uh, minister in the, in the city. One, as we call it, one champion for minister. And we try to, and, and we understand that innovation doesn't come from one specific agency, but it, it's, it's all around uh, the city and it's all around many agencies. So we try to organize 
uh, collaboration between those, between those agencies in four main areas, which is education for the 21st century, uh, entrepreneurship and uh, creative economy, uh, social innovation and smart cities. Those are the four uh, main areas that we are working on. GOPCAM, this is an unconference that we organize every year trying to, uh, to, to destroy bureaucracy and trying to connect more pe people uh, inside the government, trying to get them together to talk, to share projects. You know, the, in the city of Buenos Aires, we have 130,000 employees, which it's a lot of people. Um, of course, 80% of that are doctors and, and people that work for the education system. But what we try to do is also trying to connect uh, in a more open way uh, people that works in the government um, one to another, trying to use this kind of, 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 of models like the camps, which is an unconference when you get people together to share the project they are working on. It's really easy, really cheap to do it, and the people will love to tell about the project they are working on inside the government. Uh, well, that's it. Easy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rudy, and thank you very much, all of you. So we had a very interesting panel here, and we're discussing open cities which clearly connects to smart cities. And it, is, it was uh, quite obvious for all of us that something was really wrong with cities, not only on the perspective of the problems that smart cities want to, to solve, but also on the perspective of the problems of how ICT used to be applied in cities, because we saw a lot of vendor locking. We saw uh, also almost a vicious cycle of how cities buy innovation. So. Uh, and, and we saw that openness responds to some of these challenges. So if, for example, on technology, on, on instead of a, a huge platform, uh, Fireware decided that f open data and having external developers was a key for solving the problems. Also on the cyber physical systems, now we have the makers doing the solutions. Uh, instead of having public consultations, we now have hackathons that in a certain way, way respond to those challenges. So in, in your perspective, and it's, this is a, obviously an open question, uh, how do you see that this, this can be applied to other cities? And uh, from the city's perspective, which kind of lessons learned do you think that other cities should have taken consideration when, when opening this project, this kind of approach? And from your te technological perspective, what kind of opportunities do you think that this, this openness brings? So I'll start by Rudy, because in any time you will have to catch your plane. Yes, I will have to jump. Um, this is a, something that I said yesterday, and I think it's, it's a little bit uh, present on all the on all, in all the presentations, and it's about the community. And then if you, if you, if you open new ways to for the people to engage with the with the city, if you find, uh, and that way is not only around technology, uh, because as we, you were talking about hackathons, and hackathons are not about technology, are about community and collaboration. And inspired by technology, you can find a whole new ways to, to open this collaboration. Um, and of course, technology helps you a lot, but uh, I think people has been um, having bad services and, and from the government, and it's really, it's really a, a, a problem of, of trust that is not easy to, to, to change. And now you come with all these open government and open ideas and the smart cities, and then the people, it's like they are not really sure to trust again. So you need to like open a huge range of new uh, tools to open to that uh, collaboration and participation. Uh, my mom is not going to use uh, the open data portal, of course. Uh, she, she, she always said, what, what are you working on? But she will probably use an application that has been made using uh, one specific data set, and, 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 and then she, she starts to get that. Uh, so I think you should try to, to approach this kind of initiatives in a, in, a broader, in a broader way, not only with one specific, uh, a specific strategy. And I think in that way, cities are doing a lot of very important stuff. I mean, the city of Buenos Aires is copying a lot of things that are happening all around it. Um, so I think it, it should be great if we can like share more of good experiences, and 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 I think it's 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 key, it's central because collaboration is kind of the one of the most important things of this age, uh, and we can do it much better right now. Thank you, Sergio. So from 
the other side of the equation from the technological point of view, openness, I think it's a key for the real creation of an innovation ecosystem. So when we really want to create engagement uh, with citizens and with developers, uh, we need to create this critical mass and to reduce the barriers to entry into the technology. So cloud, for instance, technologies reduce quite a lot of these, these barriers because, well, basically uh, developers don't need to own uh, infrastructure, but now with uh, open, open standards to access the information, for instance, or open technologies to, to let's say, uh, create new applications, uh, developers have a new uh, bunch of tools to easily create uh, uh, solutions for the city. So, so from the point of view of the technology, having open technologies really uh, boosts uh, the possibilities of having uh, developers and citizens and so on. So another important aspect has to do with, with the standards or having open standards or at least uh, de facto standards. So, and now it's nice to see, for instance, that Buenos Aires has adopted SICAN as a, an open data platform because it's, for instance, uh, the kind of uh, open platform that uh, Fiverr uh, is, uh, let's say, promoting. Indeed, well, Open Knowledge Foundation is part of Fiverr now. Great. Dr. Sokwo, just adding a little bit to the question, we've been seeing that from the technology point of view, it's quite easy doing it open. Uh, but from the city's point of view, there's the technology, but there's also uh, an important factor, which is trust. And how do you see that the lack of trust in public administration can affect your your value proposition in terms of how openness can, in a certain way, uh, be an enabler for these technologies? Um, great question. Um, I've been in government only a year and a half. So probably I'm not the most qualified for this answer question, but I have a different perspective on that. Openness is extremely important in you know, innovation. However, in smart cities, openness is not, not enough to get the innovation going. Here's why. You've got a great example. Your grandma will not gonna understand why you have the open portal. But when grandma understands that whatever system that comes out is gonna help her to live longer, or live a healthier life, that's when they're gonna say, this is what benefits me. So there's a gap here. One is gap is innovation through hackathons and all kinds of process and actual deployment and pr proving, really proving the benefit of that deployment. And I think that's where cities can do a unique job because what's the test bed or smart city solution? A test bed or smart city solution is cities. And if cities do not do anything about it, then that's not never gonna be tested. Now, going back to the trust issue, I think it's really two-way street. Um, first, I don't really buy that people do not trust cities, okay? It's just that they just don't know what they don't know. And to make the benefit, I mean, to prove that you can trust the cities or vice versa, you have to show that whatever city is doing is really beneficial, tangible benefits the people and you don't have I mean give an example like we talk about city lighting process I mean city lights we replace the street lights with a network systems all that we talk about it for like five ten years one of the projects that's doing right now in, in a challenge is you don't have to replace the whole Washington DC but one district one couple of streets of Washington DC we're going to replace with a smart lighting system with the networking capabilities just give a couple of pilots and prove that why that's beneficial to citizens and why cities is, is deserves to get trusted. That's, I think, what's going to kick it off. And so that's what all cities can do. It's a unique opportunity. Thank you. Edward, uh, just asking you a, a slight different question, which is the fact that what you're doing is great and you're opening data and important data, but then comes the problem of how does Rudy's mom understand what you're doing? Um, which is the fact exactly of how do citizens understand and give value of what, uh, to, to what you're doing? How do you see that? Uh, that? Do you get recognition or do you get 
some kind of, uh, do you think there's an added value in opening the data? D have you felt that? Well, from our point of view, we have three different customers. One of the most important customers are the journalists, and they're gonna be like uh, open data evangelists, and they're gonna take the data and transform it uh, to information who <coughs> could be able to understand for everyone. First, uh, we have to build a strong links with this community, journalists, data journalists, and we have to develop uh, training programs as well for the community, for young people, of course, but the old people from my mom age, it would be diff difficult to get in this kind of inf information, but the main problem, the main trust problem would be with the young people. Because this, uh, we are actually we are in an open society right now, but we are not having open government. And the open open society is not in the age of uh, the people from my mom or my dad. It's says people from our age, and and this kind of people it's quite open. They share the uh, pictures from the kids in the, on the network, and they are quite open with everyone. And even the issue of uh, uh, privacy is new nowadays with the young people. They, they, they don't understand even the, the concept of privacy. Because they are able to share the information everywhere. And the main problem is that the government is not open government yet. And then I think that you have to, it's like the e-government. When you are trying to convince everyone to try to uh, work, uh, I don't know, applying forms from internet and whatever, you still have to have a an, an physical uh, window to deal with uh, these people with are not linked to internet, but you have to invest, uh, have strong investments in young people who are dealing with you through internet in the government issues and uh, apl application form or whatever. And then I think that you have to make some kind of segmentation. Great. Thank you. So I'm going to ask the people sitting in the public if they have uh, in the audience if you have a, a question. Is there anyone breaking the ice? No? I know it's after lunch, but that's... <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I, I have a kind of a provocation here. Um, we know that, and we've heard that today, the fact that Technology is and innovation are are the mean, not the end. Uh, but as we understood here, people are the ones that give meaning to to technology and they give meaning to the to the to innovation, right? Because they are the ones that, for example, as we saw in some of the examples, they 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 grab p traffic data and they, they create a service for taxis and something like that. So. Uh, how how do you see this uh, this impact of of open government and open data in terms of innovation in the public administration? How do public servants give meaning to the data that is being open and to the data that they're having access to? I saw you had GobLab. Uh, what are the main lessons learned from that from that program? We began in 2012, uh, and we started organizing like the first hackathon organized by the government, which was uh, full of, of, of things that we didn't know what, were, what was going to happen. And I started like, having these meetings with people from the, from the city government, trying to tell them, OK, we're organizing this hackathon. It will be great if you can bring your data. Uh, we will try to create applications over your data. And I remember this meeting with the, 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 the director of the, of the library department, which is a woman around about 60 years old, and I was talking about hackathon. She was looking at me like I was speaking in Alien, I don't know, in, in, in Klingon, whatever. And, and when she came on a Saturday uh, with a, a really cool data set, we'd actually tell you, uh, it's all the, the catalog of the books distributed in the city on, on a Saturday. And then she came with a, with, uh, with a team of, of, of people from, from her office, and, and she sat down with these two developers. And on a Saturday, she had like this application finished where you just could like put the title of the book and it will tell you where is it. A really simple application release. The jump of, of the exponential jump of innovation for that director in terms of 
seeing the power of technology right there and, and the understanding the, the, also the, the meaning of, of how her data was presented and, and, and the, the, the possibilities around that, it was amazing. And that's one of the key things where, where technology can help you to show the examples of, of its power and what you can do. And it's great, especially for the, for the public sector, where, where you have like all these layers of bureaucracy and, and, and it's uh, an organization that it's, has been developed in a way that uh, it can't innovate. It's really, it's really difficult to, to, to bring all these new processes. It is even difficult to explain it. Uh, so when you see these kind of examples, it's, it's, it's really great in terms of, of, of showing the power of, of, of these kind of processes. And I think right now we are in just in the middle of, of like in, in, in the middle term, uh, in, in a few years we'll be, we'll be laughing about this, saying around open data and, 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 and knowing that the government should be like a very more open and, and, and very uh, simple organization that it's connected in a very fluid dialogue with, with citizens and, and innovation flows in much easier way, but we need a lot of work to do still. Yeah, great, thank you. Uh, Sergio, uh, you've been working with cities all over Europe. Uh, just, uh, if, if anyone has a question, just raise the hand. I'll, oh, we have a question over there. Let's do it bottom up now. <laughs> <laughs> and let's do it bottom front as well, so. <laughs> um, sorry to interrupt the flow of questions up there. Um, but um, I just had a question. Um, the public sector seems to be uh, quickly taking up the idea of making data open. Uh, small businesses and, and startups are getting better at using open data, whereas large corporations are not such avid users of open data and definitely aren't as uh, forthcoming in opening up the data sets they have. This means that op open the idea of open cities could be a little lopsided given that those corporations are very active, users in, uh, active players in cities. What can be done to close that gap in kind of attitude towards open data? And its use. Okay. Who's can, can I take that? Um, so that's a great question. Why would why does all startup why do all startups take open data and make uh, cool apps and large corporations are not following up with, with that? It's it's simple as business case. Okay. So large corporations would not invest money unless they see very clear business case and very for, even from conservative estimate. And it's gonna happen. It's just that the startups right now is getting up and showing off and taking risk, frankly, to show that. And at some point, large corporations see more. If they, if they see value, then they'll follow up. The question is how soon and how fast that process is going to go. And I, again, I think that's where the public sector can really help. I mean, public sector cannot force anyone to use the data, but they can, they can encourage and they can actually set the playground for this small companies, large corporations to actually take and show the examples of success stories. Um, that's how I see it. Does anyone want to add to this? No, there's this, this um, the work that uh, NYU is doing, Open Data 500, where they are mapping like uh, startups and companies that are using data in a way to promote and show more examples of, 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 the, kind of, of the kind of things that you can do with the data. Um, but I think if this initiative doesn't uh, organize a strategy close to the, to the startups, to the entrepreneurship uh, uh, areas of different governments, it, it will die in a few years. I mean, it's really important to, to, to try to find uh, possibilities and trying to create a dialogue of understanding what kind of data that, uh, that startup is needing. And it's, only, it's not only about the data, it's, all, it's also about procurement, which is a, 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 huge, a, a much bigger problem uh, in which procurement is still a very closed process in government. Uh, well, we, we saw it in the US with the healthcare uh, site yeah, that was fixed by there. a startup. <laughs> we don't want to go there, but <laughs> there are so many possibilities. Mexico did this open challenge where they like presented these six open challenges. And, and they open to startups to find new ideas, and it's a great example. It's a, new, it's a great way, not only to 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 start uh, working with data, but also trying to find new ways to to redesign procurement in government. That's where you will find like a, a an explosion of innovation in in, in such a new ways uh, for for uh, government services. And if you want a good example of open data, take GPS. 
if you want to make, if you want to make, uh, try to to calculate the value of opening that data back in Regan, I think yeah, he he's, like he did it. Uh, you you can measure it, so it's um, th 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 there's a huge potential in there. And I would like to to highlight that even if we are not able to develop economic tools or economic development, which uh, I'm for sure it's going to be, it's going to happen. Our main problem nowadays is trust. And it, it could be the open data uh, could develop uh, economic, new economic fields in our society, but if it solves in some way the trust problem, which is the main problem nowadays, even more important than economic development, because without trust in our institutions, we are completely lost. If the open data is always uh, is only for this, it's a tool only to solve this problem, it's, it's OK for me. And development, OK, it, it, it could be. It could be in some way. But the main issue nowadays, at least for the city managers and the politicians and communities, are a problem of trust. I would like to elaborate a little bit more on the idea of trust, but not from the point of view of transparency and so on, but also, well, if you, we want to reduce this gap between data and entrepreneurs doing things with data, uh, they must trust on the reliability of the data, that the data will be there still in the future, that it makes sense to make an investment uh, in, in this open data, that the data will be maintained, will be updated frequently, and so on. So, well, they are doing a big effort, they have good ideas, but uh, they invest their time and their money, and they should trust on that data that will uh, go on. So probably it's uh, an important aspect for the cities to, let's say, tell the developers, we are here committed to keep this data live, uh, for the next years or f forever. I mean, uh, it makes sense that you invest here. Great. So we, we, it's normal that we nowadays think that big data is for big companies, open data is for startups, but we need game changers. And Fireware and the, all these open data initiatives in cities are the, the game cha changers that are creating and lowering the barriers, uh, breaking the barriers for, for, mm -hmm. for these startups to enter these all the whole new world of open data in cities. So I will close the panel now, thanking all the speakers very much for your fantastic presentations and for answering our questions, and thanking all of you as well for being present here. Thank you very much.